Welcome to the 35th International Documentary Film Festival Munich. Welcome to DocFest München at Home, this year's um, special online edition. Um, my name is Julia Teichmann. I'm a programmer for DocFest München. Um, before we go to the Q&A, um, I want to remind you that the film um, we're going to talk about now, Kosher Beach, is also nominated for the Audience Award, the BR Kino Kino Audience Award, and it's donated by BR and by Dreisat. So please don't forget to vote for the Audience Award. Yes, as I mentioned, we are going to talk about Kosher Beach with director Karen Kainer. Karen Kainer is actually Karen Kainer from Israel. So welcome, Karen. Hi, everyone. Hi. So nice to be here. Well, Not nice to be in Israel. <laughs> I would rather be in Munich right now. <laughs> well, right now, the, the festival takes place and we, we are going like, to record these interviews. But, um, well, we would love to have you here live, maybe with your next project. Yeah, of course. For one of the following festivals. Yeah, you have a lot of time now to prepare the next projects, as I guess. How are you? Where are you at the moment? Actually, I told you earlier that our next project was, uh, we are, like, we've been on this Zoom conference in Copro this morning. So, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so, right now, I, I'm at home. Uh, we just finished the quarantine in Israel. So, um like like bits of you know it's like mushroom after the rain everybody's going out like because we're secluded at home so um a bit of fresh air but we're not allowed to go to the beach <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because actually one of the orthodox women we're talking about kosher beach is a beach for only for uh, religious uh, people separated it's separated and secluded beach so one of the one of the women today she called me and said, "Do you think we can go to the beach now?" <laughs> She's from Daybreak, so and she doesn't have online internet, and and she's like really part of the world right now. Mm, mm. She, she said they don't have any connection to the world. But like called me and asked me, "So do you think we can go to the beach right now to come back?" No, it's just like. When your film starts, it's really something, it's just like kind of a nostalgic flashback at the moment because no one is allowed to go to the beach. And um, well, the title song of your film is Freedom by George Michael and it seems yeah. kind of from, to come from another era or something like that. Um, can you tell me why you chose, chose uh, George Michael, like a cover version of George Michael's Freedom um, as a title song? Yeah. Um... It's specific a cover version by a woman, by, by a woman. It's uh, Shiri Maimon. She's uh, one of the best singers in Israel. And, you know, I really, uh, music is part of, really big part of my movies and really big part of my world. And I, I really do think that uh, uh, music is like one of the main parts in a movie. It's like you can, it's even in documentary. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that especially Freedom by George Michael that it's one of his biggest song ever it's like it was his I think it was his coming out song and, uh, and I think so too but I don't yeah you know, I didn't check before mm. yeah I yeah I think it was he, he like in in the, in the movie clip it's like burning all his myths and all his past is like uh and it means so much in the movie because like the orthodox religious, uh, I'm sorry, the orthodox, uh, ultra orthodox religious women, they live in, in some, some kind of the world is like a, it, it's, it's kind of a, we say ghetto prison. It's like, you know, they, they're like, they, they don't have a lot of freedom mm -hmm. and the beach like, for us, it's like, okay, we're going to the beach. We know it's like uh, to breathe a little bit of fresh air, but for them, it's like really breathe. It's like freedom for them. So mm -hmm. it's like, um, and, I'm, and I can see how they feel free over there and they, and they dance and they sing and, and 
part of uh, the, the kosher bit, it's part of a three, it's like a part of a big area bay. It's not, not so big, it's like 300, I think 300 meters. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's not uh, the only beach, it's uh, next to the Al... Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's... <laughs> it's part of the... It's next, it's like next door to the LGBT uh, uh, beach in Tel Aviv. So, uh, the Pride Beach. So, it's amazing. It's like such... Uh, no, it's uh, in the two the two worlds are so separated but so close like both of them needs the freedom and both of them it's like so weird but they are the, on the same actually beach mm. and they have one uh, lifeguard station they're mm. sharing both the same lifeguard station if you didn't understand <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit excited, so I'm sorry no, for no my problem. English. You know? No problem. Yeah, your English is perfect. <laughs> um, what I would like to know, you just mentioned it's a very closed community within Israel. In Tel Aviv, maybe even more than in Jerusalem, because in Jerusalem, it's kind of, it's, it's more religious in general compared to Tel Aviv. Yeah, uh, of course. So in Tel Aviv, the worlds are maybe even a bit more apart than, than in other parts of the country, I would say. So um, how did you um, get access to this community? Wow, this is, this is a good question because not only in Tel Aviv, but in all Israel and all the world, I don't think they allow to be filmed. I don't say, they don't allow to be filmed. They don't allow to speak to um, the Israeli or not Israeli to you know, television. Especially and the women. Yeah, especially the women. They don't allow the the guys are allowed. So it's like yeah, that's all the strict rules. It's so it's so bizarre for us. We don't live it. We are like you know we're secular. We don't, we don't know it. But uh, for them, it was uh, to break a rule. Mm. I see them. You know, I can see. And if you can see the movie, they're so funny. The women, but they are so strong and feminist in their own strict world so it's amazing and uh, but to get uh, them to speak to me it was a really long way like i think it took me okay it took me four months to get uh, to be allowed to film in the beach it was like i need a rabbi approval i need a the city hall approval it, it was a lot of approvals just to make it in and then when I, when I make it in, it was so hard to reach out. And like, there was one woman that told me, you need to speak to the rabbit of the beach. Mm. Okay, and it, okay, I said, said, okay, there is a rabbit for the beach. I was so amazed by it. And uh, she told me who she was. And then I spoke to her and it took me another four months that to get her approval. And when I got her approval, she told her, women like the group of women she told me okay i want i want you to speak to her mm -hmm. and and then it's it was amazing so, well, like a flower that you know opened up like we have such an amazing friendship till till now it's i talked to one of them today before now it's in israel it's uh, shabbat mm -hmm. and she like every friday she calls me and she tells me went to light up candles. <laughs> um, You're not so allowed to give interviews at that time. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I actually told her, you know, they were going to be interviewed. She told me, what? <laughs> okay, I think one of the main reasons, they, I think we have such an amazing relationship because all the time, yeah, they want me to go back to religion. <laughs> and all the time I was so frank with them and so and I told them you know I'm secular it's not like um, and I have a lot of respect to them mm -hmm. yeah and uh, I think even me I went through a really long way with them by myself mm -hmm. because one of the reason I went to the beach like uh, I and I started to to make this movie and to know this world was because like um, I had another project about uh, women in high pregnancy, high uh, risk, uh, high risk pregnancy, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but I, I couldn't get pregnant. And you know, it was, I was really down about it. And I went to the beach and then I knew the rabbits and then everything It's like, wow. I, and like, uh, you know, I told you earlier, like I, I gave birth to my second girl two weeks before the movie premiered. <laughs> So I gave birth to the movie and I gave birth to my <laughs> second child and they feel like they're a godmother of, of my children. Mm. So we, we've come a long way together. So mm. it's like a big creation for both of us. Mm. And you know, actually it was, it was amazing but because they didn't want to be interviewed. To, it was like when the movie was premiered in Israel, it was such a shock for the Israeli here in, in Israel, like they, they got like you asked me because they don't allow to to make interviews to the press or the tv and it was and like everybody here was excited about it and they really want to interview them but the rabbits didn't want to go to get interviewed oh okay yeah it's it's amazing you know mm. when the film premiered in dr Aviv, i think it was right um yeah. you brought your protagonists also i wanted them to come Mm-hmm. But they are not allowed to be in a, a, in the in the also in the, mm-hmm. because it's mixed with the, um, yeah, like boys and girls and, mm-hmm. and they're not allowed to be there. Yeah. I really wanted them to come, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, I had uh, my own premiere for them, only women. <laughs> What do they think about the film? Um, at first. I can tell you because the film has a little bit criticism on the world. So mm. they have like mixed feeling about it. On one hand, they, you know, everybody comes up to them from the, the Orthodox world. They see it, you know, they actually see the movie. It's a hit in Bnei Brak. And they come up to them and they say uh, to the rabbits and Sipora, she's one of the protagonists of the... And they tell them you're doing, um, I said in Hebrew and I'll, I'll try to translate it. They say to them, um, um, you're making good with God, like you're making Kiddush Hashem, mm. but because the, you look so, like this, the Orthodox world looks so good in the movie. Mm. So you're making, like it's, it's a good PR for us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, something like that for mm. with the Lord. <laughs> it's good PR with the Lord for you. For us, because every time the image of the ultra orthodox um, world in Israel, it's so bad. Even now, I can, you can, I can tell you that in Israel now, um, most of the uh, sick people in in the I do you say Corona or COVID 19 COVID 19 is the okay. sickness and Corona yeah. is the virus. Yeah, so, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. So they're saying that uh, um, they don't, uh, they prefer to go to the synagogue and mix with people and they have like, um, the, their, uh, this, the high rate of the sick people are the ultra orthodox and they like everybody's mad about it in Israel. But uh, you know, actually they're so protected and I'm, I'm so sorry for them that they feel like that, you know? Mm. It's like, um, and I'm so glad that because I. So it's the rabbit, highest COVID 19 rate um, within ultra orthodox communities? Oh, really? Yes. Okay, didn't know. yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they even make a special current. The, the first quarantine was on Nebrak. Mm-hmm. And they called me and they talked to me that, like, they were really strict about it. It was, I'm so sorry for them, but. Um, I think they, 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 they got like, um, they, they said like, they, they, they went out for the press and they told them you, you shouldn't like make this assumption because like first we didn't know about it because they're all, you know, this is a world, a very strict world. And only when they, um, they shared the rabbis and told every, the rabbis to, told, to tell them to stay in home And to do like okay, they understand it, mm. but now I think they know they need computers and they need the internet. Mm. Mm. One of the main thing in the movie that uh, you can see the changes of the religious world in the time in the period that I was filming the beach. 
Yeah, and, and it's also that you portray like three generations of women, right? Yeah. So it's like the older women, um, the widows, let's say, and then the yeah. mother and then her three daughters who are like on wow. the way to her secular Thank life. You. I would like to know how are the three daughters, the three girls? One of, uh, one of them is anorectic. How is she, for example? How are they today? Are they fine? I don't want to cry about it, but she's not good. Mm. But she's... Uh, She's, she's with us, but she's all the time going out of the hospitals. And uh, because of the movie, she even got uh, more help. This is what I was aiming for. I really wanted her to get more help. But uh, the beautiful thing about their mother that, uh, and I tell you about the other girl, because they, they went, they're saying they went out of religion, okay? Mm -hmm. The anorectic and the bigger, the biggest, the bigger sister, uh, Michal. Mm -hmm. Now her name is April, mm -hmm. and she lives in LA, mm -hmm. and she's a lesbian model. The cur with the curly hair, right? The yeah. Michal. Yeah. She, uh, wow, she's so beautiful. Just yeah. so she's modeling in LA. She has a girlfriend, and and uh, her mother. She knows everything. Mm. but she her daughters are like uh, the most precious thing for her the, she loves them she they, like she doesn't uh, know everybody is saying that when you go out of religious so they mourn you and they and you're secluded but it's not right she's a mother and i think because maybe i really wanted to be a mother at the period of time that i was shooting the, i was filming the film I, I think actually the film is about motherhood and I really adores her because she has so much troubles at home with her husband mm -hmm. and she still hugs her daughters and she just wanted them to be safe. Mm -hmm. And you know, even Michal, she's an L, she's still in contact with her and she still prays for her to come home mm -hmm. and, uh, and she's, Michal doesn't know that her mother knows everything. She knows everything, but she doesn't tell her mm. that she knows it. Mm. She loves them so much. Even the, the anorectic girl, she's still, she's still at home. And the mother tries everything. She tries to get her into the hospitals and out of the hospital and privates, you know, uh, everything. She doesn't care. She's out of religion. She doesn't care anything. She just wants her daughter to be healthy mm. it's she's it's amazing how how like she fights for them mm. all the time mm. and it's ultra orthodox it's you know it's when Hani the anorectic goes in the street they spit on her mm. you know what they do that they do that because they know who she is she, they know she's from a religious family you know if if i go in nebrak mm doesn't you know they didn't it's like a myth but i didn't they couldn't care less about me because they know i'm secular mm. but they spit on her because they know the family she's coming from it's very hard for them you know the girls actually is the criticism about the ultra orthodox but i still don't understand why they so the ultra orthodox spit on her why they spit on her yeah. because she's going in shorts in nebrak Oh, that's obviously. Yeah. Yes. No, it's obviously, but actually, if I'm going in Nebrak like that, nobody notices me. They, they, don't, they, they don't even give me mm -hmm. a look, okay? Mm. Because they know I'm secular. Mm. They, there are a lot of secular in, in Nebrak. Mm. It's sometimes like a touristic uh, city, you know? They take in tours of secular to eat the food, to to go to the... Oh, no, I understand. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm on the wrong track. But um, tell me one last question. Maybe you were talk we were talking about the project you were just pitching today. Um, when you say this film is ultimately about um, motherhood, what is your next project about? Um, short okay, I have, I have a couple of projects, but this is a really interesting one. It's about a um, transgender uh, woman. Her name is Yael. She's actually a religious transgender woman. 
and uh, she has a wife named uh, Hadar, mm -hmm. and they have a biological son mm -hmm. of both of them. Mm -hmm. And now Hadar is in a second, uh, she now in the middle of COVID-19, she's in the middle of her second pregnancy. So, and they live in an orthodox settlement. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of stuff. It seems like in, impossible. In, two, in <laughs> one couple. <laughs> it's like uh, gender and uh, family and motherhood. And actually I can, I look at them as a love story, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, the basic in the area we're living now, it's the, um, it's the loneliness. We're all like in our home, it's very hard. We don't see people and we're social human beings. And I can see both of them and they're amazing. They're such a beautiful couple and they're so funny as well. Like they're computer geeks like this. And uh, and you know, they're fighting for the right by living their life. They're not living in Tel Aviv. It's, it's, uh, it's very, um, it's not hard to be um, trans, transgender in Tel Aviv, but to be in, in a, or like an Orthodox settlement near Jerusalem, it's very hard. Mm, they don't accept you. I so, hope you see life with a love story in, uh... Munich, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Next year, it would be right? amazing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll come with them, with their two. That would be great. I'm waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is nice. <laughs> and then the, yeah. You have any other questions, maybe? No, it's like we we ran out of time. Let's. Oh say. my God! It like was that. okay. We could have. We could go on for an hour. I know that. <laughs> You know, I'm so sorry. You know, when I was in Doc NYC, the q and I I think was lasted like 45 minutes. I think Basil, the... When we are live, it's, it's, it's usually longer, but here we are limited to... to, to yeah, of course. Tough schedule. Tough schedule. <laughs> but... Um, oh, yeah, I, I can't believe that I can be in person to see you. <laughs> next time, with a love story. Yeah. I'm waiting with for... With the love story, yes. I'm for... <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Yeah. All Can you send me the photo? Ah, the photo, yeah. Yeah. We'll uh, okay. Now. Can uh -huh. I tag you and everything? Yes, you can. You Tell need me my when. grantings of rights? No. <laughs> you have my grantings. <laughs> the rights. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, don't thank forget, you so much. this is for the audience now. Karen's film is nominated for the Audience Award. Don't forget to vote. It's a really funny movie. <laughs> I hope they laugh. Did you, you when can you go the to movie? the beach? You can go to the beach. And yeah, you can go to the beach now. <laughs> yeah, it looks really beautiful, the beach over there. Yeah. Karen, all the best for you. Thank you. I had such a fun time. Thank you.